Um, so here is some funny news that I I found. Um, because recently, Blizzard's Overwatch Two has gone over onto the Steam uh, Steam platform. And apparently, well, not apparently, it is. Overwatch 2 is now the worst-rated Steam game. Last I checked, too, that was still in effect. Let me double-check. Because, yeah, it was, like, it, like you see, that's from the Steam page. Overwhelmingly negative. And I'm going to extra confirm that. It is free on, on there. But yeah, it is still overwhelmingly negative. Let me see if I can share uh, share that. Just a moment. Yeah, here we go. Although I can't, unfortunately, I can't zoom in. But you can see the overwhelmingly negative right there. Uh -huh. And it's... I haven't got so like even the only reason it exists on Steam is so you can give it a bad review. <laughs> Three thousand hours on Blizzard client. Love this game. I'm so let down by the entirely the entirety of the Overwatch Two change. Stop playing the game. I love because of corporate greed. Do better. That yeah, they definitely went heavy into the microtransaction and season passes and stuff like that for this game for Overwatch Two especially. Um, but yeah, it, it bring back free loot boxes. That was the thing in Overwatch One that you could earn the loot boxes a lot easier. And not a lot, but I mean it was easier than what they've got it set now. So yeah, but here is again on Niche Gamer for this one. Uh, reaching a whop whopping 9% posit positive reviews, Overwatch 2 outranks every bad game on Steam. Blizzard has denied a, uh, denied a platform uh, for people to air their grievances for so long that it all spilled into Steam, where more than 77,000 users gathered to rate the game negatively. Ah, that's okay. So yeah, they don't know. So Blizzard won't allow you to rate the game on their Battle.net uh, application or marketplace or whatever so like it is gamers found a way and you drop it onto um onto the steam uh, platform they do allow for reviews and everything and well there you go um overwatch 2 now ranks as number one worst game on the platform surpassing every asset flip and indie cash grab that the platform has hosted in recent years. Uh, the negative reviews are still pouring in, and the game's discussion tab has become a war zone where players are arguing about the reviews. However, the funniest part is that Overwatch 2 is currently one of the top 20 most played games on Steam. With over 70,000 players in-game, it is unknown if all these players are the ones who reviewed the game negatively, but there's bound to be some overlap i can see that there is and also that you know people that are playing on pc are already on steam's platform for games as soon as that that came over onto their platform onto this they probably were like well i still play the game i he they probably still play with friends and stuff like that and it's called all right it's on steam they just made it easier for me so that means that they don't have to use uh blizzard's application Things are more consolidated here. Just keep playing it on there. So, and the thing is, like, Steam is the only one that actually shows uh, player player counts and stuff like that. So, that's probably it. And, the, and then, like it is, for anybody that wasn't going to go over to Blizzard for their Battle.net application because they don't want extra programs running on their computer and this, this comes over for free, it's a free game. So it's called, all right, why the hell not? So that's probably a lot of it right now, too, is a lot of people are trying it out for free. And maybe getting an idea where they may or may not want to keep going with it. Um, however, the funniest part is that Overwatch 2 is currently... Oh, wait, did I just read that part? Yeah, I did. Sorry. 
Uh, Blizzard is able to do the impossible and still have successful game despite breaking a negative review record on Steam. The love-hate relationship that people can develop with their titles is honestly impressive. So yeah, Overwatch 2 is available for Windows, PC, via Battle.net, and Steam now. Xbox One, Series X, S, PlayStation 4, 5, and Nintendo Switch. But yeah, like I said, uh, it's probably just for a lot of players. It's easier just to keep everything on one platform. So probably a lot of people moved away from Battle.net and gone and keeping it on Steam. It means they don't have to have it any. They don't have to have the Battle.net anymore. And why well, not? Who why, owns why Battle.net? You... Battle.net owns Blizzard. Battle... Okay, Bl- okay. <clears throat> Blizzard owns Battle.net. Yeah. Hmm. That's you been think their whole. Will ever be ran out of business? Blizzard? No. Well, Steam. Blizzard's owned by oh Steam. Mm-hmm. No. No. The Valve has a long, like I said, they've been de- they developed their platform a long time ago. This is they've been in development of the Steam platform since like two thousand two three. Mm. Long freaking time, I'll say that. Um, and there used to be a lot of memes about how dog shit it was too, and stuff like that. We all made fun of it, but we all still used it. Right. Um, but it, it opened up the availability for ease of connectivity for game ser- for some game servers and stuff like that. And then they started bringing on basically titles exclusive, kind of like, yeah, kind of exclusive to their platform. Like, uh, <clears throat> a lot of mods at that. But like mods like uh, Counter Strike, Team Fortress, and uh, one of my fa- old favorites was Day of Defeat. So they brought like a lot of these on, and those were some of the early games that you could. And of course, they had Half Life, and so you just connected it on there, and you could download it again at any time, play it up at any time if you wanted to. And then on top of it, made it easy for like installing some mods and everything. So. They just kept building, building, and building, and growing, and growing, and growing, and then yeah, now and then they started adding the ability to purchase games through there, and we all kind of got lulled in with it with the whole ease of just buying digital games and PC games were the first ones to go away from physical altogether. You can't find physical PC games unless you're looking for old school ones that are being resold on eBay. But otherwise, you don't get physical copies of PC games. Yeah, I, we I we were the guinea we talk about guinea pigs, like I mentioned before. But yeah, PC gamers were basically the di- guinea pigs for okay. How easy can we basically swap out physical games for digital ones? And again, hook, you can still hook find line it. and sinker. I always thought you still find physical games. I know Walmart always had the section for PC games. A lot of times, though, like you can get the box, but there's a digital code inside. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I always had a bad taste. I had a bad taste in my mouth with Battle.net because I don't know. It, maybe it was Blizzard, but when I downloaded that freaking Diablo game for mobile, and I got to like level, I don't know, like forty-seven, something stupid, in like two or three days, put a lot of hours in that game, and then something happened with my account. No, well, I think I. I don't know what happened if I signed up as a guest or I signed up or what. Well, that's a like, that's a that's a phone game, so it wouldn't have used Battle.net. Battle.net is well, you had to subscribe. Though. You had that's how you signed up through it, though. Oh, oh, yes. oh, okay, okay. Because I I normally wouldn't do Battle.net. I never. I didn't even touch that. that game, so I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know how it worked. Like, you sign in. You could sign in with like Apple, Facebook, or like your Battle.net account or something like that. And then oh, okay. one day like my it just like restarted me, or I lost all my stuff. I was like, what's going on? And then I tried to like sign into Battle.net, or I think I like I created the Battle.net account. I don't know what happened, but I just blamed it on Battle.net. I was like, this is trash. And then I was like, Blizzard, you're trash. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, granted, like. Luckily, thank God, I dump four thousand or ten thousand dollars in a local <laughs> game like that guy. Whatever that guy did. Oh yeah. man, can you imagine? Like one who's just got ten thousand dollars, just you know, to where you just dump on a game. Yeah, he's a stock trader, dude. Absolutely, what he is. That's how he had it available. But so, but yeah, I always growing up, I always remembered like you always had a. It was always that PC, that special PC section. That you could go and you get your droid. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, though, I remember, I don't know if I shared this, but when I was growing up, because my uncle's the one that got me into Star Wars, but he had this tie fire, he had this like uh, X Wing game on his old, oh, laptop, yeah, yeah, old yeah. laptop that he had a this old, like, you know, F 15 joystick he had. And that's how you you could use it and play. You just hook it up to the the laptop. But I'm talking about like it was this was like an IBM laptop. This thing weighed like 63 and a half pounds, and would run off like chicken grease for you could <laughs> leave the computer on for 14 months. It's like a Nokia phone, man. Like you remember those batteries lasted for weeks. The phones themselves would last forever. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I remember playing that. But a go we would go to like I remember going to Walmart or whatever store was and just seeing just the PC games. But it always had like, you know Oh yeah, the old box PC games were great. Oh yeah, man. Big Absolutely. Series, but they were great. And no, then you get but the yeah, I, then you get like the collectible, like the metal tin, you know yep, the yep. tin games or whatnot. Yep, don't see that anymore, man. No, you That's don't. why, like, I'm, I'm curious why how GameSoft's still in freaking business because I remember back in the day, like, uh, trade ins, resale games, and probably now like Funko Pops and shit like that. Yeah, but it used to be back in the day where it was strictly just games. Yep, pre orders, physical yeah, games, pre orders, and then the magazine subscription, and now they have you know all sorts of stuff. To try and but, I remember you go to school, you'd you be you're the coolest kid on the block if you went to. Went to on a Monday. You went to school after getting the magazine on Saturday, and you were ex- but you could only have that one magazine if you were a subscriber, right? Good old Game day. Informer, right? And I, I still have old Game Informers from like Gears of War, and I have to find oh, wow. storage. But oh yeah, man, I was a huge Game Informer. But this was also back in the day where IGN was actually credible. <laughs> you know, so take, take uh, out for what it's worth. Right. We've had our discussions about IGN, how it, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I just thought I thought this was just a funny funny thing to bring up for sure. Yeah, no, <laughs> I love how we talk about something, and then we just segue into our own thing, which is great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>